You are listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast, a proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Welcome to the Empire. It's the Eskimo Empire Podcast. Bobby's in the shotgun, looking downfield, and then throws. It is up in the air to the goal line. Bounces. What a catch! What a catch by Duke Williams! Touchdown, Eskimos! Bryant Mitchell! It's going to be intercepted. Arjun Colhoun! Mike appears to be a CFL encyclopedia. Welcome back to the Turf District for another episode of the Eskimo Empire Podcast brought to you by United Construction Company. Check out all the great builds they do at unitedconstruction.ca and while you're on the internet, check out our website as well at eskempire.ca and you'll find all of our links and social media right there. I'm Andrew and to my podcast left is the one and only super fan, Mike. Well, hi there. Ooh, that's a lot more pleasant than I thought it might be. And (laughs) you gotta let go. That's right. Okay. And the Pole Magic Queen, Commissioner K. Uh, pardon? <laughs> <laughs> pole Magic. That's why I said it. Guys, <laughs> stop. Twitter Pole Magic. Is, yeah. that, is that better? My poor mother. I know, but it's, come on, that's funny. That's yeah, it's, yeah, it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> okay, yeah. that, thanks. I appreciate that. It's just not chuckles worthy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. Um, yeah, so we have the Twitter Awards going on right now. We are in the quarterfinals um, getting lambasted by BC Lions Den at this particular moment and uh, but it looks like we have a chance with all the votes we've had to possibly move on to the semis so uh, we will see how that goes and of course we will keep you posted as we get uh, farther in but for those of you that have taken a couple of moments to either vote and or share that poll thank you very much we really appreciate it Um, now we did talk about it on the Periscope but I want to take two seconds to talk about it on here Uh, super fan we have an announcement (laughs) Of uh, what we're doing for Grey Cup. Yeah, we uh, thought, again, we are the host podcast, so we've got a lot of the different podcast families coming over. Uh, we've got, uh, like I said, two and outs coming. Uh, obviously, BC Lions Den. Uh, Josh is coming from Podski Wee Wee, and he'll be meeting his podcast partner yeah. for the first time. <laughs> Piffles will be here. Piffles yeah, will be we here got, as well. We have lots of guys coming, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll, it'll be great to see everyone. And, and to commemorate, we want to do something a little special. So we made uh, trading cards. Yes. So you'll actually only get nice. CFPN awesome. trading cards <laughs> featuring uh, all 33 podcasters in the Canadian Football cool. Podcast yeah. Network. Uh, there'll be little team cards for all 13 podcasts and uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, you'll be able to walk around and, and find different podcast members and get a pack of cards and, you know, collect the whole set. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. So I think the total was 48 cards in a set. Yeah. So with not, the checklist. Not, yeah. not too crazy. But I do think, uh, and I, I'm excited for everybody to see these because, Mike, you did an amazing job on these. Oh, nice. And uh, everyone got their pictures in, which was awesome. Which is great. And, uh, and we had some fun with it with our bios and our stats and all yeah. those other fun <laughs> things. So uh, look for them and I'm sure you will enjoy them. Yeah. yeah. Remind me to tell you a story. Okay, I, nice. I'll, get, I'll get on that. All right, now, um, now, of course, we, uh, we we're of course back here after another Stampeder loss, which then uh, the Esks were officially eliminated. We couldn't from even the playoffs. enjoy it. No, no, we couldn't even enjoy that they're on a three-game losing streak. Those bastards. Anyway, uh, here to help us break this down and <laughs> talk about all things Eskimos, it is our good friend, Jed Roberts. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be here. Just questioning my genetics over here. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> I hope Randy listens to this. Okay. The, uh, um, now, before we talk football at all, i uh, got to say congratulations yes. on Thank your you wedding. Thank you very much. Yeah. This, I'm uh, an honest man now. Yeah. yeah that, uh, I'm not living in sin. No. no. no uh, so yeah. long it's funny because my uh, six-year-old comes up to me. And he goes, you know what the best thing about you guys getting married is, Dad? And I go, I don't know what. He goes, I'm not a bat dude anymore. <laughs> is that what your Catholic school education is teaching you? <laughs> he said, what? I said, never mind. Never, 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 yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah, it's right. awesome. You're, yeah. you're pretty good. You're safe now. Yeah. Um, beautiful, beautiful pictures on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, it was, it was a wonderful. Like you know what? They, uh, yeah. We hired a photographer, and um, she okay. hasn't given us the the end result yet, so we're still awaiting that. Like, we had oh, some, okay. the, the pictures that we put out. 
on social media were kind of the ones that like our family took, but like okay. there oh, okay. are some ones that I had took with my daughter where we threw leaves up in the air. Like we got really care for got care um creative. Sorry. Yes, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um <laughs> it was it was a wonderful weekend. It's it was uh I had family come in from all over the US and uh you awesome. know, we did it Edmonton style. Sienna Collins officiated the wedding I and saw that. Uh, yeah. we were on the trolley on top of the high level bridge. Trent Brown, who's a former safety, mm-hmm. all star safety, his great grandfather helped build the high level bridge. So oh, I mentioned that cool. what, during my vows I mentioned the fact that Trent was on the trolley and his grand his great grandfather helped build the bridge. So uh, it was an amazing, like, it's a great time of the year, too, because the foliage mm-hmm. was fantastic. And, of course, yeah. all the leaves are gone now, but you would never have known that it was there. But it was yeah. beautiful. It was it was uh, something to remember, for sure. Very special. Yeah, that, yeah. that is outstanding. That is, it's, and, yeah, it was just so nice. You guys look so happy. I mean, you guys yeah. always look so happy, but yeah. that was yeah. a really nice Yeah, it was awesome. Spot. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. So, um, now, we have... Lots of things to, um, pardon the pun, tackle in this discussion, but... Um, <laughs> What's tackling? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, yeah <laughs> that might be one of them. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the biggest burning question I think that a lot of people are talking about right now, and that is, does Mike Riley return as the quarterback of the Edmonton Eskimos next year? What is your opinion? Do you want me to take that one? I want yes. you to start with that one, yes, okay. and then we're all going to take a swing. Um, I, I think, personally, um, he's 32. Yes. I think that this is his opportunity to swing for the fences, mm-hmm. contract-wise. Uh, the collective bargaining agreement's up, so he's not going to do anything minimally until that's settled, right? Right, um, yeah. And knowing that Ed brought him into the league, I think that Ed will make a very, very strong pitch to mm-hmm. bring him out there and tell him that he will build the team around him and utilize his talents accordingly. I think that uh, Mike, having started there, mm-hmm. having it be close to his, um, you know, where he grew up, I think his family is from the Washington area there. I mm-hmm. think that uh, it just makes a lot of sense in a lot of different ways. Um, having said that, I think that if Mike went against the grain and he decided to stay here, it would say a lot about who sure. he is and, and what his priorities are. But I really, I, I think that there's just too many things that make sense for him to go back there. Right. And knowing what I know about like how committed Ed is to, to building that team from the ground up and having that type of, he understands how important the quarterback position is. Not of that course. Edmonton doesn't, but yeah. I just think that, you know, I, I, I would be really shocked to see Mike Riley playing here next year. That's not to say he won't. I just, yeah. that's just my opinion. That's, okay. You know, so that's would Lou retire? Pardon? Lule? Would he retire? Mike? I th- no. Lule. No, Lule. Lule uh, Travis. Travis would be the backup. Yeah. Because yeah. Travis is the backup uh, Jennings now, would probably right? end up moving well, on. Well, only because you know. he was injured. Lule. No, but he but came no, in you know, as the Lule, backup. Yeah. Lule's got some, I think he's still got some time left in him. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I you know, so And he'd be, be an excellent coach. I think he's made it pretty known that he wants to be a coach when yeah. he retires. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. I think that he would probably, you know, kind of move into that maybe, or, or I don't know, who knows? He might we'll be a Kevin Glenn and just <laughs> make the world tour, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the world tour the CFL world bingo? Tour. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What are your thoughts on this, Super Ten? Uh, well, I, I think, like Jed was alluding, I think there's only really two places that Riley's going to end up. It's either mm-hmm. he's going to stay in Edmonton or he's going to go to BC. Edmondson can offer him a lot of things. This is his team. It was always been his team, really, since the 2014 season, if not yeah. halfway through the 2013 season. Um, and that's probably going to mean a lot. Um, I know he's probably going to talk with his wife. He's going to talk mm-hmm. with his parents. Um, and he'll have to make that decision. That being said, um, BC can offer him things that we can't, and it has nothing yeah. to do with money. And that's no. being able to see your daughters growing up at that age is yeah. something we could never offer because it's just a short drive for him there. Well, I mean, they, his family does come here you know, during playing. the season, but yeah, it's still, it <laughs> yeah. is going to be different. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. So, you know, then again, living here for the whole family is cheaper. Right. You know, it's a lot easier for it and everything else. So uh, I'd almost put it as a coin flip right now and where he ends up. Right. Were you going to add something in there, Jed? You, that, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, just like what you said, you know, have watching his family grow up. And I also think that I, you know, you could problem solve through that. And it may, you don't necessarily have to buy property in Vancouver, which is next to impossible, you know, with the, with the real estate. Maybe you could, you know, maybe live in a hotel or something and then drive home. Right. Like it's just, it's really just a quick skip across the border and he's there. Like, I I don't know. I just think that 
you know, having played myself and getting to that point in my career where I felt family, like uh, being away from your family, it's really hard, you know, yes. you're, you know, it's really, really difficult. You know, when you get older, you realize because you put your whole life on hold and, mm-hmm. um, I never, it wasn't a bad thing. It's just that, you know, you suspend your maturity and you're, you, and it, you're just kind of there, you know, and then once you quit playing football, that's when you start with the rest of your life and you only get so many years to do it. And I think that right. with him, you know, he started playing there. It just makes a lot of sense to me. Like I, I would actually be really surprised if he didn't go back there, but, uh, I would actually be pleasantly surprised if he stayed here because so for selfish reasons, I want him to play in green and gold for the rest of his career, but mm-hmm. I just don't know if he's going to do that because there's a lot of weird things going on right now at Edmonton, and missing the playoffs is the least of them. You know, there's a lot of other things going on right now that we don't know about, and uh, there's got to be some things that are going to have to happen for him to stay here, and hopefully that works out. But if it doesn't, yeah. I'll understand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Your thoughts, Duchess? It's all been said. It's all been, yeah, and, and that's, that's the thing I was going to say. It is it is really 50-50. I think the one thing, though, that I will say, and much like you said, Jed, is um, I'd have a lot of respect for him if he stayed here. Yeah, me too. And, and I could understand it only because in his mind, his, his competitive nature is... I, I, he could own almost every quarterbacking record here yeah. if he but stayed he, here. But does he? What? But does that mean anything to him yeah, if it he, doesn't? He already won a winning. great cup here. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? So yeah. it's like in his mind, and I can see where like He's that's why all I the think. Boxes. You know, when you think about Ricky Ray, you know, like he left. Mm-hmm. What makes him a great quarterback is that he went to another team. And he did it from scratch, right? Right. Like, and nobody expected him to do that. Everybody was like, oh, no, there's no way he could do that. Like, he had this around him here in Edmonton, and that's why he was so good. But he went there, and he did it again, right? Twice. Right, you know? so, yeah. Yeah. Twice, you know? exactly. So I, yeah. I think that, you know, the competitor, I could see it as a competitor. I could see him rationalizing it that way and saying, you know what, maybe I could do this again with a different supporting cast, with a different, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sort of uh, – Mindset with in mm-hmm. terms of like our play calling and that sort of thing with the different coordinator. You know, I want I want to prove that it's you know because every great athlete, you know, you could always argue well Kobe Bryant isn't the greatest because he had Shaq. You know what I mean? Right, right. You know, and that's what that's the that's the knock against him, right? right. So, but then you look at a guy like Peyton Manning. He was in Indianapolis and then he went to Denver and he yeah. won a championship even though yeah. he sucked. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but we won't talk about Spoken that. Like a but true he still Bronco won two fan. Super Bowls with two different teams and nobody will ever take away take that away from him. Right. right? right. So I think that the competitive and Mike, I, I, I could see him sort of saying to himself, you know what, I'm going to take this challenge on. I'm going to have my family close and I'm not going to miss anything, but I'm going to I'm going to try to prove my doubt is wrong. So. Okay. And that, and that, that and I think that's what we were all kind of, you it's, know, it's talking a about, right? Race, yeah, it's, it really is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so now, <clears throat> I guess let's before, well, no, we'll come back to it. Um, let, let's change into a different spot where we're talking um, is Mike Riley going to be here? What do we think about Moss, uh, Sunderland, Rhodes, Benavides, those coaches, like, are, do we think that they are going to be here next year or, or is that going to change? Um, Duchess, do you have a, a, we'll go to you first this time. What do you, do you think A, it will change and do you, or do you want it to change or what do you think? I honestly don't know if it's going to change. Okay. I think that there are bigger issues like, Jed was alluding to, it's not just about the coaching and the players. I think there's some deeply entrenched problems and issues that the whole organization needs to to change and to modernize, if that's even a term I can use. Like They're trying to do things that kind of work, but it doesn't really flow with a fan base like i'm sorry but saying that winning isn't everything you shot yourself in the foot so terribly yeah like as a football team it kind of is as a community not so much right but you can't you can't expect the fans to be okay with a team that has proven that they are so resilient to come out this year the year of the gray cup that we're hosting at home and they fall flat on their faces with so and and I think they had so much pressure on them to do so too. But I don't. I personally don't think that they had the support of the organization as a whole, the players and the coaches. I think it is so. It's so mismatched right now, and it is not a team. It is not an organization as much as I wish it was and hope that it was. It's not. It's very individualistic, and it you can see it now. You can totally see it. Players coaches organization office staff everything right so i don't know if it needs to come from the top up 
personally, yes, I'm not saying anyone needs to get fired or but I think changes need to happen. And yeah. whether that's rotating responsibilities, let's just say, mm-hmm. maybe that is something. No, that's not a maybe. That is something that has to be looked at. Something has to change and I'm not an expert and I don't have the solution so I can't say what it is because I don't believe in giving a pro like saying fire Lynn roads but then not giving a solution like You're that right. doesn't yeah. fix anything yeah. yeah you're just creating a big hole now so whatever that is they need to actually come together as an organization and figure stuff out and pride and all this other stuff needs to be taken aside and because we do have a threat of riley leaving mm-hmm. why right yeah, we don't we don't have a spot where he would want to stay. That's yeah. part of yeah. The, yeah. Same with uh, diff- yep. some other players too, and why why some left? Yeah, yep. Why? Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Well, we never really got a reason for why. No, it we was didn't. Fired. You know, I mean, <laughs> not I, really. It was swept under Personally, the rug for me. Yeah, you know, like I'm good friends with Ed, and I always will be. Like we played together for many years, and we we talk to each other every other day. So. I don't know how Ed feels about it, and um, but I also understand, you know, that it's a business and you have to run sure. it a certain way. But I, I'm a big believer in transparency. Like, if, listen, yeah, if you had philo- philosophical re- differences, say that, right? Yeah, philosophically, we just couldn't make it work. Say that. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know, like I just don't really. I felt like it was all swept under the rug. I yep. felt like yep. it was very. Right. Um, I felt kind of. I felt like it was underhanded the way it was all handled. You know, and. You know, I don't have any more insight into like what happened than anybody else does because Ed doesn't. You know, Ed's not one of those guys that kisses and tells, right? Mm-hmm. So, right. and I respect that. That's why he's my friend, right? So, <laughs> uh, I don't know anything more about it than that. I do know that Ed was very upset and very disappointed, and um, he was devastated when they let him go. He yeah. said all he ever wanted to do was be an Eskimo. He thought he was going to yep. be here for as long as they would have him. You know, so um, you know, I was disappointed from that standpoint. But having said that, you know, I don't. Hold any ill will against Sunderland. I think no, Sunderland no. inherited a very, very difficult situation. So I've never said anything critical about him. I think he's a strong football mind. I think he's done great job with the hand that he was dealt. I do think that the fact that he kind of came in, they switched horses midstream. Yes, yeah, uh, puts him in a tough situation because Jason wasn't the coach he picked, right? So, but I also think that because he had the history with him in Ottawa that that might work in Jason's favor. But I think that the biggest thing that hurt Jason this year was the fact that there wasn't a senior coach on the offensive staff to help him in those moments when he had to make a decision like, do I kick a field goal here on first down, Mm -hmm. you know, and try to go for the points and then try to get, you know what I mean? Like those are, when you've only got 20 seconds to make that decision and you don't have any timeouts or maybe you only have one timeout and you want to burn it, like you really need some help, you know? And and, and I don't think that Benavides was that guy because he's on the defensive side or for whatever reason, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know from having conversations with Ed, that was one of the things that he said he would have liked to have seen, was that one of the older coaches would have helped him out in those moments, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, if ifs or fifths, we'd all be drunk, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still together. You know, when you look at those situations, yeah, and hindsight's, yeah. <laughs> hindsight's 40, 50, 50, 50, 50, 40, 40, 40, 50, 50. It's something you know, like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are all drunk. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> 26, 26. <laughs> Didn't take long. Yeah. No. But, you know, yeah. in all seriousness, though, yeah. you know, when, when he, you know, situations like that, you know, I think the fact that they made that change right before the season hurt the team. And yes. I don't think anybody's yeah. admitting that. I don't think anybody's taking responsibility for that. Right. I don't think anybody's being held accountable for that. I think right. the fact that they, you know, it's tough when you let your GM go right before training camp, you know. And yep. it, it's I don't care what anybody says. Right before know? the draft, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then you've got to bring another guy in who philosophically might have might have a completely different way of sort of approaching the draft, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know one of Ed's maybe weaknesses was that he didn't have the necessarily the greatest track record with Canadians, you know. And mm-hmm. and Rob Ralph was handling that side of things and. I don't know how, how Brock would do with that. So I mean, right. we really kind of have to see where Brock. You know, he's get, we got to give him another year, right? That yeah. type of yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't think I when agree. you're saying, oh, fire these guys, I don't think that's necessarily the answer. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that, you know, Brock saw, earned himself an opportunity to, you know, give him a year, give him a chance to, you know, set the table draft wise. And, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know, like, what the future holds. Like, I'm not in the dressing room. I'm not a coach. I don't right. know any more than anybody else at this table, right? But as a outsider with my experience, I could see, you know, them 
trying to wipe the slate clean and him bringing, bringing a whole new coaching staff. Or maybe he keeps Moss, Moss on and goes with a different defensive coordinator. Or yeah. Maybe he goes status quo, which will piss a lot of people off. You yeah. Know, because oh, I don't will. really think, yeah. you know, you don't, there's nothing on there that says that, yeah, they, 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 they regressed, you know what I mean? And right. when you yeah. regress, there's there's a reason for that. So you have to look at everything, and everything has to be on the table. I mean, is it coming from the upper echelons? Is it mm-hmm. an administrative thing? Is it the personnel? Or is it you have to evaluate everything, right? Yeah. And I don't think anybody's beyond scrutiny at this point, this, exactly. least of all Jason and least of all Len. You know? Yeah, so. yeah. I think, uh, and I agree with you with, with Sunderland getting another crack at it. Usually a GM will get to hire their own yeah. coach at least yeah. once before they before they go. And I, I did think, and I mean, you look at some of the signings that we thought would never happen, like Konar at the in free agency. We thought all we, we were all convinced he was going to be C. Yep. Konar town, stayed, yeah. right? Uh, he just Rhymes. locked up Sewell for another couple of years. Yeah, yeah that was a he, huge. I can't I can't <laughs> emphasize that enough. Like the, he's that's a huge signing. People massive. don't realize what we have in him yeah. right now. Yeah. He is yeah. he is yeah. The linchpin of that defense on in the front four. That Absolutely, that's why he made my roster of three. <laughs> that's yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, uh, the, he's made some amazing moves with guys that we yep. thought we wouldn't have I agree. here, right? Yeah. So, I, agree. I think he does get the opportunity to to try and and bring more talent and and find a way to. Yeah. to and I'll tell and, you what, and, like I yeah. um I played for Joe Glenn at okay. the University of Northern Colorado. He was my head coach my last year. And then Joe moved on to uh, Wyoming and then finally ended up in Montana. And he coached okay. a young man by the name of Brock Sunderland. <gasps> ah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Joe's son, Casey, said to me, that Brock's a solid guy. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. said, you know, when Brock comes up there, man, like Brock Brock's knows what he's doing. So I have on good authority that Brock's, Brock knows what he's doing. Like he's a yeah. good, I mean, everybody knows about his history with his dad being a scout. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't question him as far as that. Like I, he's the only one out of this whole thing that I've given him pass. And I've been pretty critical of Jason. Like he's made some pretty qu- questionable decisions you know but i think that he's done the best with the hand he was dealt he had no offensive coordinator he's been kind of doing it himself you know so and his offensive coordinator left right before training camp as well so as much as he was involved in the offense and the offensive planning he was not planning on having that role and Um, and and he needs an offensive coordinator there's no doubt about it Yeah. yeah When yeah. you've got twenty seconds to make those types of decisions, so you've got to make the game the game can decisions like do I call a timeout, do I this, or what's mm-hmm. the next play, right? So right. that's a lot, you know. I mean, you could mm-hmm. delegate that, and probably should have, you know, yes. maybe one of his assistants. But I don't like again. I'm not in the dressing room. I don't know exactly what they're doing or whatever. But it just seems like there's a lot of different things that sort of com- conspired against them this year. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No justified. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Having said that, though, they remain relatively healthy. All year long, right? Especially they, they compared to last really, year. Aside from well, Walker. Except for the beginning of the year. Like, the beginning of the year, we yeah. had a whole bunch on six game, and then Johnny that six Adams game went through, year. and Johnny Adams being out yeah. all year was definitely yeah. uh, uh, our, I can't believe I'm saying this, was definitely an issue for us, but yeah. we didn't have that shut down corner no. all year, no, and no, that's what he I was, have. right? Yeah. So, um, so I mean, those types of things, yes, but overall, you're right, in the last half of the yeah. season, no, there was very helping. few yeah. as far as, as yeah, injuries I mean, were They were playing with the full deck, but the most yeah. part, unless unless you want to count Walker. Yeah, you know, Walker, it. of course. Was, and I think that had a much bigger impact than yeah. we all even expected it to yeah. have, right? Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. I agree. So they were um, able to yeah. kind of key on um, Mitchell, you know. And, and, uh, and Williams, Williams, right? Yeah, and Williams so. has been playing hurt. We know that, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's so. made it harder as well. So and when you, But we talked about this before, was that uh, when they weren't displaying that balance between run and pass. Mm-hmm. It was like they were heavily weighted in favor of the pass. They were really predictable, and the teams were keying on certain things, right? If you can't run the ball, you're right. just not going to set up the pass, right? And even in a three-down league, it's, it's so important. Yeah. You know, you look at the good teams in this league. They all run the ball very well. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's so. just yeah. giddy while you're saying yeah. that because that's his big thing is yeah. running the ball. And especially when the weather turns. You know, <laughs> yes. when the weather yes. turns, if you've got that O-line that can just punch people in the mouth and then you can get, you know, five, six yards of carry, you're just laughing, you know? Absolutely. And you don't have to like, – and the game that actually, for me, that told me that this team was in trouble was Ottawa. When they were in Ottawa, yes. and the wind was blowing, and they couldn't do anything, they had nothing, you know, and yeah. I, that shocked me because I was convinced that they could run the ball yeah. if they wanted to, and they couldn't, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, and that that, that and Ottawa that was, actually showed that, that was they before were, they moved O'Donnell back inside, yep. and yep. then they moved O'Donnell back inside, and the next game they're able to run the yep. ball, and then the next game they don't. I'm yeah. like, I don't know that BC game. I'm still completely. Ugh, no. I, it it it's blows a, it's my weird. mind it's that it out. was so. It was only six run plays. Like yeah. I just don't. And again, so that goes back now to. And I'm going to pose this question to you, Mike, because we're talking about running. But it goes back to is is it 
does is Moss in trouble to be gone completely, or is it just that he needs an offensive coordinator? Or what what is your opinion on where Moss stands, having had both roles this year? Well, I think something we have to consider, and that hasn't been really talked about yet, is that they're implementing a salary cap on coaches. Absolutely, and that's, that's the first be. time that's going to be happening. Especially with and a new league, yeah, with a new league coming up, we need to realize that if we let Jason Moss go, and he's a head coach, yes, so he's going to be commanding a decent amount of that salary cap. Yeah, that means we are hamstrung in getting another head coach because automatically we've got that much less yes. salary to pay to all of the coaches. Yeah. Uh, it's bad enough we're going to have to get rid of coaches because there's a limit on how many coaches you can have. Yes. Um, so you're going to have to see people doubling up. Mm-hmm. And maybe you're going to see a defensive coordinator who's also a linebacker coach or something like that yep. Yep. just to make up for that. Um, uh, Moss is signed for two more years. He signed at the end of 2020. I know. And do we want to have that salary on our books for two more years and try and get a quality head coach? I don't think it's going to happen. No, no. So I think Moss is going to be there, but they are going to insist that he has to have in the exit interview an offensive coordinator. And like you said, it's it's not his fault. Carson Walsh got the offer to go to the the Grey Cup or the Super Bowl champions. Yes, whatever, which is known as the American Grey Cup. Um, (laughs) By the way, yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, go to the the Super Bowl champion Eagles. Yeah. You yeah. can't turn that down. First of all, he's making way more money. Mm-hmm. The opportunities are much bigger. So uh, we don't begrudge Carson Walsh anything. No. But that really hamstrung the team. And I, I think that Jordan Maximic, every time you see Moss outside of uh, the game time, Maximic's always beside him. Mm-hmm. They're very close. They're always bouncing ideas yep. off each yep. other. Maximic was a quarterback in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and possibly college. I don't know. That's a great point. I actually was thinking, you know, I, I think Jordan's ready to make that step. Is he? You know, I think that Jamie in Ottawa would be a good comparison. Like, uh, sure. I can't pronounce his name. Elizondo. Elizondo. Yeah. <laughs> He's same kind of progression, right? <laughs> Jinx. Uh, Maximic <laughs> went out to Ottawa and then he came back here, you know. Yeah. So yep. I think that, um, you know, he. Give him a shot, man. Like, yep. We've had a lot. Edmonton's been a proving ground for a lot of guys that came mm-hmm. up here. You know that Levin Suller and all those guys. You know they they became yeah. more coordinators up. You know they became assistant coaches and then they went on to become great old coordinators. You know, right elsewhere, right? Sure. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think that having that clearly defined role and giving Jason the autonomy to just kind of look everywhere else and not right. have to worry about like because I think that Jason is such a is a guy that I know him personally. I told you the story about when I broke my leg and he was yes. standing at my bed and he was crying because he felt responsible for breaking my leg. And he's just that kind of guy that just, he just is so passionate and sure. he's so into the moment, right? And that yeah. when he's dialed in and then things go sh- crappy, he just forgets that people are watching and he just loses his mind, right? And I, I know who he is <laughs> and I know what he lost as a kid, you know, when his dad was shot as a cop and everything. Yeah. And he has oh, that wow. fire mm-hmm. and he just lose he just can't contain his passion in those moments and yes. i think that when you're putting that much responsibility on him he doesn't have that filter to be like and you know cavis has the same kind of sure. sort of malaise yeah. where he just can't he just loses his mind and cavis lost his mom you know in the yeah. hurricane right and i was yeah. there when she died and yeah. you know we were on a road trip in regina and i yeah. saw him cry i've seen jason like i've seen sides of these people like you know yeah. i i get really frustrated when people take oh jason's a moron he can't control like, yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't know what you're yeah. talking about man so yeah. the yeah. highest wonder lick scores you know? that's ever been recorded but i mean yeah. help the guy out really? yeah. like give him yeah. something that he can like understand what his limits are and that's where i think when you lose ed yeah and you bring brock brock i don't think understands that or doesn't understand um jason the way that ed did and i think right. and i've had because they played ed, together right like, yeah, I, yeah. Each other 18 years. Like, mm-hmm. I just i feel like you know he should have those he should have somebody there to guide him and mentor him in those spots and and to be able to say hey this is probably something you should co- consider mm-hmm. yeah you know, you're the head guy. Whatever you do is you. But yeah, and then at, uh, Jason and those moments would have enough respect for that person to say, "Yeah, you know what? You're right. Um, you know, I've got a lot on my plate. Maybe, but maybe he, Jason says, you know what? Screw you. I'm going to do what I want to do.' Right? Like <laughs> he has Maybe. the option. Could be. But I, 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 I love that you brought Maximic up because I really think Maximic. If they were really thinking, they would have put him in that put role and just right. like live with it, you know. And then Jason, if he wanted to, could have overridden him at key points, but at least he wouldn't have to be Alone. in that like yeah. role where he, he felt like he had to do everything. And yeah. I think that's what did them in this year, really offensively. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that, and that, that's that's completely fair. That's We've completely got most fair. of the same pieces as we did the last half yeah. of last year. So yeah, I mean, outside of like one offensive tackle and. And, you know, one receiver, it's, it's more or less the same group. Yeah. Yep, well, pretty much. Well, it's so much yeah. easier to, to call for blood than it is to actually fix a problem. Mm-hmm. 
And that's what... It's a really, good point. Well, that's what really irks me is like... Fire this guy! Fire this and guy! Then who? Like all on Twitter, like it's just a cesspool yeah. of idiocy. Like it's yeah. actually quite embarrassing to watch Eskimo fans right now because I'm like, you are so stupid. Yeah. You're actually a moron. Like yeah. you are actually far, a moron. Yeah, you're, you're, you're dumb face. That's you are what it a is. stupid but I, dumb I would, face. <laughs> I would question, like, how many people realize what Mike knows about, like, where Jason is signed and about the salary yeah, caps. I, yeah. I don't think yeah. anybody realizes that. No, right? and, like, and that's a okay, huge part of it. Yeah. Let's just fire this guy. But you're still on the books for yeah. that guy. That's yeah. right. That yeah. guy's two years. You're still going to be paying for that guy, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, so, so how do you bring in another coach that right, that is going to be I mean, quality? You could, but you wouldn't be able to pay him anything. That, that's <laughs> the thing. You, you, the, the I mean, you'd end up bringing a guy that? from uh, Regina or, yeah, you know, some guy from... <laughs> you know the Okanagan Sun. You know, like, <laughs> you know. I mean, he's a good coach, but does he belong in but the CFL? He, I, I don't know. I wouldn't right. mind yeah. maybe the Vancouver. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I, now that's one that we did talk about. If if they were looking at a replacement for a head coach, UBC. who do we who do we look at? And you brought that up the the Blake Nill that's in UBC that does had he success want to though. Exactly, he's got a great gig in the university game. Yeah, but he had lots of success in Calgary, then lots of success wow. or fair amount of success in success in um, UBC. So is that somebody who? And I think the the point that you made that actually I really liked is the fact that all of the coaches that we've had recently have been first time head coaches. Yep, since Don Matthews. And instead of having a guy that's had experience as a head coach, yep. not necessarily CFL, just no, head coach but anywhere. head coaching. Yeah. So we'll he understands you know, like, how to yeah. look over all of these things. I wonder, do you, do you think that makes a difference, or do you think now Jason has learned it enough? Well, that, you I know mean, what, that's, like that's the thing. You, you bring up a great point because I remember when they brought Ron Lancaster in. Right. Mm-hmm. And my dad said to me, he goes, you know, when Ron was made the head coach in Saskatchewan, right. he was a player. And right. then he segued into being the head coach. And he said they ran him out on a rail because, A, they couldn't disassociate the player from the coach. And it was hard for the players to sort of take him seriously because, you know, last year he was our quarterback. And the we know things about him that we probably yeah. shouldn't know, right? So <laughs> it's hard for me to look at him with a straight face you know, when he's telling me to, you know. And yet he's You have a few guys that yeah, you know like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, boy, I can tell you stories. But yes, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. not enough fire but, truckers. And then when he said, world. he goes, I bet you. He says, I bet you. With this new opportunity, that Ronnie will be an amazing head coach. Sure. He says, I, I think you guys will do great things with him. And and I wasn't sure did. because I I knew I was familiar with that story about what happened mm-hmm. to him in Saskatchewan. And they they really just like, they didn't do him right by him at all. You know, they yeah. really ran him out. Um, but yeah, he was like arguably probably the best head coach I ever played for up here, you know. And then wow. he went on to Hamilton and he duplicated that success. Yeah, with the same did the same thing. And receiver, mind you, but yeah, but, yeah. you know, so. but he, he, you know what? And he was a player's coach and he let the guys play. And, and, but he was really smart and then he brought a really good crew of guys around. He had Adam Arita as offensive coordinator. Yes. He had Greg Newhouse. He, right. he always had Mark Now He had all these really quality coaches around him. And I didn't really feel like they did that this year. I don't felt, I didn't feel like they had that. Those teachers, those mentors that mm. were able to kind of appeal and, and bring out the best in those guys and like teach them like skills, you know. You know, not everybody's a great coach. Like some guys right. are, are sure. there's some certain strong points. You know, I remember I listened to the story of uh, Randy Spencer ta- likes to talk about Dennis Winston. You know, they got yep. a great linebacker from yep. the Steelers. Dirt. He said, great player, horrible coach. <laughs> horrible coach. <laughs> like he would just be on film and be like, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you maybe, uh, so want to do the, yeah, yeah, we'll just talk about the next play. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Great player, not a good coach, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and so he was kind of floating along on his big name, yeah. and uh, that happens more often than people believe. Like oh, okay. I, wish I would would have you believe, you know. So, uh, you know, you, you really have to have, you know, the best teams I ever played with. We had great coaches and great teachers sure. and people mm-hmm. that were able to sort of like bring out the best in each and not just teach everybody the same way, but approach people in a way that could motivate them, but yet encourage them, you know? Yeah. That's and, why um, veterans are so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I, I like, I don't know. Defense this year. No. Yeah. I don't know what that's, what's, very... what's going on there, you know? Like, so it's, it's a, such a, such an important part of things. And with the, with the salary cap, I'm so happy you brought that up because <laughs> I've been thinking about that too. 
it's an amazing like it's it's going to have a profound effect especially with the new league they're going to be yes. competing for the same bodies yes. they're going to be they won't be able to pay as much as they give those guys down there because down there they won't have that figured into their salary cap that's It'll right just be one of those things where they get carte blanche it's to pay West. whatever you know yep yep and this is probably i don't you know in the nfl i think they do but in the cfl that's never been tried before so it's right. going to be very interesting and especially like look at saskatchewan do you think chris jones is going to stick around with the salary cap hell no you know <laughs> he's out of there right so well, he gets any college in the states oh yeah he's yeah. gone offer. he is gone i actually think See, he's yeah. surprised he lasted this long but he doesn't have the right offer yeah so the volunteers say hey come and get but us. now there's a new league gone. so you never know what that might well come, even yeah. vanderbilt like you know yeah. any team in tennessee you know tennessee tech will do heck austin p <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's there's got to be a college in there that wants to be somewhere. Tennessee State, man, look at you. <laughs> One of these junior colleges, Chattanooga, Tennessee, the mocks. <laughs> yeah, the, the the next time they have yeah. uh, what's that Netflix show called? Uh, uh, yeah, last, last chance, chance you, last chance you. Yeah, it'll be Chris Jones. Starring the Chris coach. Jones. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. Um, before we move on to the next spot, because the last question I want to ask, just because you were. You were a, a big special teams guy, mm-hmm. and we always talked about you know you make the tackle, throw your hands up, and then you get the credit oh, for yeah, the tackle. Like Even if you're in the move. if you're in the pile, yeah, just yeah. throw your hands up. Throw your hands up, you'll get credit for it. <laughs> yeah, Even if you didn't touch the guy, you just throw your hands up. <laughs> boom, you're done. You're good. Perfect. I got at least thirty tackles that way. I hope Nate is listening because he needs more. That's right. Um, but okay, so obviously the special teams we've talked about it all year. Um, we've we've had decent cover teams. But our nah, I disagree teams. with you there. They oh, really? they, okay. they were terrible. Like okay, they, like I watched them at their lanes. The guys weren't squeezing. They weren't playing no. to their help. They were all playing on islands. Like they gave up a lot of return touchdowns yeah. this year. Mm-hmm. It was it was horrible for me to watch that and because none. you yeah. know this and and this is where the Canadian content comes in. You really have to scout and get guys that are just like assassins so like they just go out there and, and that's they all they want to do is run down there and just hurt someone you know like, yeah with the current pc climate and everything that's probably not going to go over well but um when you play football it's a mindset like and and tony burris used to say to me and i can't say it because it's not politically correct but he used to say you have to be a certain type of personality okay and i'll leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> you say jay you got to be a certain type of personality and, and i would be like tony I understand what you're saying to me right now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that advice and I'm gonna apply it out there on the field right now. And so I would run down on the field and I would be a certain type of personality, and I would make a type of play that only a certain type of personality would make. You know, okay. and people would look at me and go, "That's a certain type of personality, personality. right there." And you'd be and like, "Yep." You know what? I hope I never come across that certain type of personality again. <laughs> Here's your episode line. <laughs> That's it right there. So, just to title this one a certain right. type of personality. Um, okay, but do you think, though, was it the right timing to get rid of McDermott, or was that just a PR move? I just, they had to do something. Had, it was optics. You know, I don't okay. really think that that was McDermott's fault any more than, you know, I mean, you if you don't have the right ingredients to make a bomb, don't expect an explosion. You know what I mean? So don't get rid of the bomb maker. You don't have the right ingredients. You know what I mean? Like you, you get rid of the bomb maker, you're still not making bombs. Like, oh, we got a new returner. No, you don't. You didn't do anything. Did he return any touchdowns? Nope. No. Did no. he? No, no, he didn't. No, but he had no blocking either. Okay, yeah. but yeah. still. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I don't think that it's deeper than that. It's deeper than not having the right returner. It's, it's okay. deeper. It's the schemes. It's, And I don't know that that's. I think that personality wise, I think personnel wise, I don't think they had the right people in the right positions. And special teams is about matchups. Okay. And it's about taking a look at that team and going, I'm going to put this person here. And when you have that type of mindset, and this is the thing that I keyed in on about this team, is that you have to buy in. Yeah. And when the coach says, hey, listen, I'm going to. You're going to play this position on special teams this week. You can't be like, I don't do that. Yeah. You got to be like, oh, okay. Tell me more. Like, what do I need to do? You need to be, you need to be here with this guy. I, I didn't see people doing that. I didn't, I like, I, but that's just me looking from the outside in. Okay. Uh, football special teams is all about matchups and it's all about like, Okay, we got this guy coming down on kickoff. He's the arrow. How are we going to negate that? You know, are we going to put uh, a certain type of body type on there? I didn't see a lot Ray. of big body types running down there and wrecking right. shop on kickoff. Yeah, on no. The Eskimos. It was a lot of like finesse guys that didn't mm-hmm. have the right angles. And we're, case in point, the last game that we watched when. Uh, 
I don't know what that guy's name, uh, the French kid that went down there and like Zagar- lost contain and gave up the touchdown. Oh, yeah. that was Hoover, actually. Oh, he was Hoover, on the yeah, far whatever. side and long hair, so I assumed contained. he was French. Anyway, um, <laughs> he, <laughs> he, yeah, he does have long hair, but yes, right? he missed that. Yeah, he, missed, but yeah. he didn't miss the tackle. He missed contain. He, just, he, was, like, yeah. he was just he was completely out, out of position. Right. And you have to know, you have to squeeze, you have to be the force contain. It's not like you have to, it's not a feather contain. It's not a, you're the force contain, dude. Like yes. you've got to squeeze it to your help. And that's like that in a microcosm. That was the year. Like, guys weren't playing to their help. They weren't playing. They didn't know. They were, like, waiting for other people. It's like, and I've talked to Blake Dermott about this, and he said the same thing. He goes, it was a collection of personalities waiting on those three or four ninjas on the team Mm -hmm. to make a play. Because every great football team I ever played on had 10 or 12 ninjas that were just straight up killing people. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and they game in and game out. Like, and, and it wasn't like they were waiting. They were like, you know, they had their, you know, they were, they were just doing it, right? Yeah. And they weren't waiting. They weren't waiting for permission. They weren't asking anybody for permission. They were just going down there and doing it, right? Yeah. And I don't think maybe we had five. Yeah. But Mike Riley. Yeah. No question. Walker, before yeah. he got hurt. Yeah. Bryant. Yeah. Straight up ninja. Yeah, right? absolutely. Share it. Ninja. Yeah. 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 Mondo. I don't know who else you got. Mondo. O'Donnell, maybe. Yeah. And, and, and Sewell. Okay. Yeah. You got anybody else? White. White never white, misses. White, of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, well, and I'd say Kwaku. I'd say, I'd say yeah, Kwaku. Yeah, Kwaku had a, yeah. had a career year. Yeah, yeah. I have to give him yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he more could. Players. But listen, ha- yeah. as well as he played, it could have been so much better. Sure. Yeah. Because they really didn't do anything. They just ran a very vanilla. He just were straight stick up. in the mud. This is where I'm lining up. You know, if they yeah. would have disguised some things and ran some things behind some him, mm-hmm. he could have had 15, like 16. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's 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 a tough year. Um, it's going to be a very interesting off season. I think yeah. that um, I had said when they got rid of Ed, they set this team back five ten years. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I think that they were really lucky to get Sunderland because he's a very good football guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if they'll stay out of his way enough to let him do what he wants to do because they didn't do the same for Ed. Okay. So, right. mm-hmm. And Ed's a pretty wow. strong personality. So yeah. if so, you know. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Well. I think that's a that's a good uh, note to finish talking about that particular part. Uh, let's. Um, I mean, it was bye week, so we really have no esque news. There was a couple of releases today, but it was well, just PR guys. There was something um, today in, the, in the, on at least on Facebook, and uh, that was esque related news. Is um, after many many years, decades, the, someone is leaving yeah, Greeno. the Eskimo, Eskimo organization, right? And that's Diane Greeno. So if people right. don't know who that is. She is the one who shaped the cheerleading team into the oh. world class organization that it is. I would argue wow. she shaped cheerleading in Canada. Period. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, would, there, without yeah. her, there yeah. is no, you know, because I remember when I first came into the league in 1990, it was very. Um, there were dancers. Uh, how do I say this? If you went to Toronto, if you went to BC, you were looking at. Um, they probably pulled them out of the French maid, maybe. You know. Okay. Yeah. Here in Edmonton, by by contrast, when when Diane came. It was very like wholesome. It was very about like the stunts and the like mm-hmm. and actually and it was it, it took a page out of like the, the NCAA, right? You know, right. and and it was uh, she really like made a concerted effort to make that a big part of the program mm-hmm. and, and to get people involved and you know if it wasn't for her cheering in canada wouldn't be the way it is you know no. and she she implemented the male cheerleaders which right. is fantastic yeah. because the stunting went like next level when they did that yeah. they competed in tournaments all around the world they did quite well yeah um you know every year when we do the football one-on-one she she has me come in and talk to the cheerleaders about the the rules of the game so and everything awesome. and it's very, very like good, she, yeah. she's her intention to detail is second to none and, and i know she said that she wasn't stepping away because she was quitting she just wanted to give somebody else the, the the opportunity to kind of do it and, yeah. and take it to whatever level it needs to go to i think she leaves it in good hands like she did a really good job like considering where they came from yeah yes. oh absolutely where they are today yeah. it's, it's amazing like i had a front row seat to all of it and it's mm-hmm. it's amazing like it's nothing short of astonishing what she did you know she took you know they never they weren't giving her any money or anything like that you know when they first mm-hmm. started out and uh just became from like sort of a labor of love to to what it is today it's, it's quite amazing and she actually not just for the eskimos but for just to cheer um, across the across the CFL, for yeah. the province, yeah. you know, yeah. And, yeah. and if it wasn't for her, it wouldn't even exist here. So, right. yeah. well, no. even the cheer team themselves, they're like so implemented in the community. I mean, look how they supported us yeah, today absolutely. and yesterday, yes. just yeah. like getting the yeah. the poll out. So, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Oh no, I know. I, I see. I hadn't read that yet, so I'm glad you were brought that yeah. up because wow. that, that's a huge that's thing. And I know, massive. like, even uh, my daughter did the the mini cheer right yep. yeah. for a couple of years, and so you know, she, it had an effect more on uh, on the entire community. So wow. yeah, she's she's got a, a stamp all over the place. So. Yeah, she's. I had yeah. said it earlier today, and on social media, that she's an icon. Like she's yep. an yeah. Eskimo icon, just as much as Gizmo Williams was. You know, yeah. she <laughs> she has more longevity. You know, yeah. and she's yeah. better looking. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you can. Understand her. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. 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 The bar is yeah. pretty low there. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope they honor her on Friday then. Or Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, all right. Well, and uh, I guess the other the only other news that we have, just because I think it's funny, is uh, football frenzy is now multiplayer. So well, uh, we're going to have to kick that. If you're playing multiplayer, let me know. I do want to try it. I think it'd be kind of fun. Uh, let's take a really quick break, and then we will come back with our pick 'em in fantasy and the return of the Eskimo history moment. This is two-time Grey Cup champ Randy Spencer, and you're listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast. The Eskimo Empire Podcast is brought to you by United Construction Company. As a full-service commercial general contractor, United Construction Company serves large and small-scale commercial, light industrial, and multifamily residential construction projects across Western Canada. UCC is a relationship-focused builder forming a trust and respect that is at the forefront of their commitment to quality, value, and integrity. Visit their website at unitedconstruction.ca to find out more and support them as they support the Empire. Join the Empire online. Find us at eskempire.ca. Check out all the new blogs and then follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For more history, follow at Esk's History on Twitter. And even more of my pics on Esk Empire Photo. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to help the pod grow. Thanks again for listening. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back. It is time for a very special Esk History moment that uh, actually features a bit of our guest. Let's get to that right now. Let's hear you cheer and holler for a mighty famous team. Let's hear you roar, you know what, for a team that's on the beat. Our voices rise up to the skies, the fans are glad to scream. We love those Eskimos. Welcome back to the Eskimos History Moment. Uh, today is a very special one because we're going to take a look back 25 years this year to a, a Grey Cup that um, I don't think a lot of people were expecting. It's certainly at the beginning of that year. The year itself started off uh, in January when there was a huge 8-for-8 eight eight trade that we had with Toronto, sending uh, Tracy Ham and seven others to Toronto for players. Uh, we, we sent Tracy Ham, Craig Ellis, Enos Jackson, uh, Chris Johnstone, uh, several others, and we got back uh, Downtown Eddie Brown, Ed Bruce Berry, Dixon. Yeah. Bruce Dixon, Donnie Wilson. JP exactly. Some great <laughs> players in that time. It's like you were there. It's almost like. <laughs> uh, a couple other players uh, uh, left at the end of the 92 season before 93, like Mike McLean and Pierre Bercheval as well. It can't really be understated. Uh, then, then the next trade in February, we uh, ended up sending Dwayne Odom to Chance Cameron, and we had a draft pick that we sent later, uh, a guy named Mike O'Shea. Wow, he, yep. he was all right. Whatever happened he, to him? He wouldn't come here. <laughs> no. Uh, no. We sent him to Hamilton for uh, Damon Allen coming back to the team. And, and as we were discussing earlier, uh, a huge part of that 1993 team. Uh, so other new faces that came to Edmonton in 93, uh, Melvin Hunter, Robert Holland, oh. Lucius Floyd, Errol Martin, Glenn Rogers Jr., and Tony Woods. Uh, Huge not, names. Yeah, absolutely. A- another really big thing about the 1993 season, it was the first season in CFL history that featured an American team yep, Sacramento. with the Sacramento Gold Miners joining the league that year. So uh, I'm going to ask you, Jed, what was it like, first of all, going south to play uh, football? Again? Oh, it was fantastic. You know, my sister was living in San Francisco at the time. So, nice. Uh, you know, we uh, when we went there for the first time, Trent Brown and I um, went on a road trip. I dropped in on my sister. Um, and then Trent and I ended up, uh, I watched Trent, I think it was rapping on a street corner. I think. <laughs> like um, one does. We were out until <laughs> Dropping probably, some beats? Nice. We were out until probably five in the morning and then we drove back and we got dressed for the game. It was 102 degrees for the game. I thought oh. Trent was going to die. 
Um, but I knew what the weather was like down there, so I drank a lot of water all night long, and he yeah. didn't. So he was puking before halftime, but we still won the game. But, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and the one, story within the story. <laughs> I mean, you guys won forty three to eleven, and this is the we, height of And I had a sack. It was awesome. You nice. Know? So yeah. my sister was really happy, and uh, you know, my sister got to watch me play. It was, you know, it was it was a really it was a feather in our cap to be able to beat an all American team. Right. Mm-hmm. And we we actually had a winning record against American teams when the American teams were in. Uh, I think the only team that really gave us trouble was Baltimore, but we sure. I think we finished like I think we we beat them and they beat us. Right. Uh, it was always really really tight playing them. Yeah. Um, but it was like you know for me because I played in the states right and I knew a lot of the players that played on those teams and it was like it was a badge of honor for me to be able to pit my skills against them. Nothing against Canadians, but yeah. Um, I I. I always felt in my heart I was better than CIAU kids, you know, sure. CIS, yeah. because I just felt like the coaching was inferior. I wouldn't argue that now, but back yeah. then I would certainly say that the coaching was light years ahead of yeah. the States than it was there. Um, so whenever I was playing against American players, I, I my up my game, you know, and yeah. I, it was it was a real it was a thrill, you know. When we went, we'd go to we played Vegas, we played a preseason game there, and <laughs> I've only told the story a couple of times, but man, it was uh, I think it was late June. And the temperature on the field was 57 degrees Celsius. And it was so hot that when the wind would blow, it would get hotter like a blow dryer. And um, Benny Goods was the starter, and he told me, you can take all the reps. And I was already playing all the special teams. And the entire offensive line was on IVs at halftime because we were all dying. And I dropped 22 pounds. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, we, I, was, I was delirious after the game. It was so hot. We won the game, but uh, yeah. <laughs> It was Anthony nice. Calvillo was the quarterback that yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, crazy. Um, oh my goodness! Some stories, man. I mean, we were in Shreveport, and I remember Larry Ruck being so bitter because we couldn't find a cab <laughs> to save our lives. That was a story I told you about when the big guy. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, we had some good times. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, Birmingham. Uh, we played. You know, that was really cool because. Uh, you know, we were in the same locker room with Joe Namath and Bear Bryant and all those just sure. wow. players. You know, yeah. Legion Field. It was fantastic. You know. Um, San Antonio, go to Riverwalk, you know, playing. Yeah. But the thing about the San Antonio is you'd be in the dressing room and it was built for the NBA team, right? Okay. And so we'd be in there and the nozzles were nine feet high. <laughs> so you couldn't, like, you know, you're trying to jump up and adjust it, you know, to get the right sprays. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Could have used Matt O'Donnell there. Uh, yeah, Matt yeah. O'Donnell would have been helpful. Yeah, great, awesome. great. You know, it was just an awesome time. I mean, the only the only team we didn't play in their stadium was in Baltimore, and I really regret that because yeah. I'd heard so many great things about Memorial Stadium. Sure. Yeah. Um, but we never actually made the trip out there. They always came out to play yeah. us. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, and the played, fans, uh, they had a good fan base there, too. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's pretty funny because uh, the the one big banner in the stadium, there, there's a picture of me like running over a guy, and it's actually on a, a point, <laughs> it's on a field goal. Yeah. And it was the time that um, Memphis came up to play us here. Yeah, okay. And um, when we down, went down to Memphis, it was crazy because Memphis had their end zones. It was like really short. Their end zones were like, I think, 10 yards. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so they cut off the end zones, and then it was really like, it was. And I don't, it was grass, and then it was turf. So you had your grass cleats on, and then you were playing on that weird, like, asphalt turf, like yeah. the rug in here. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, I, th- I swear, I think a couple of guys broke their ankles on that field. Not surprising. Uh, but, I mean, that's the CFL. It's like BMO right? Field. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember uh, we used to have, like, there were a couple games where we'd had our, like, practices on in the hotel lobby. You know, we didn't have a field to practice on. You know, it was crazy. I mean, but people don't realize this about the 90s, is that if, if expansion hadn't happened, the league would have died right yeah because they had the expansion fees and that's yes. what kept the league yep. solvent right and people yeah. don't realize that I, someday they'll write a book about it i'm sure maybe somebody has talked They've about it, a few but, but not Hugh campbell talked about that about how you know if it hadn't been for expansion and we talk about guys like shante peoples mm-hmm. anthony calvillo yep. you of know, course you, yeah. you, uh, mike pringle, pringle Holfield, you know those guys all <laughs> yeah. came in as a result of that influx of talent coming from the american teams you know uh tracy went down to baltimore and brought a whole right. bunch of guys back to mark dixon yeah came up to montreal he ended up going to dolphins and playing had a great career down there char portanesh from baltimore um you know mike kieselak went yeah. on to play for the cowboys played with troy aikman you know um and, and these were guys that i was facing you know to I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it was a thrill you know yeah. so oh i bet and i keep in touch with some of those guys through facebook so yeah. it was it was wonderful like the, the 90s was an exciting time i remember my dad saying that to me he goes this is an exciting time in the cfo like yeah. you'll never see another era like this again no no uh, and if, and i'd argue that that saved the league because you know the expansion fees kept the league solvent and and when i left the league in 2003 
attendance was going back up and we kind of got that younger generation and a lot of that was through all the work that we were doing off the field and we were doing the stand schools and stuff and trying to encourage the kids to come out and watch us play because I think a lot of that was forgotten in the early 90s they just got complacent they just expected it to happen and, and you really got to work for your because it's a gate driven league right it's yeah. not, you're not licensing your way into unless you're the writers you're not licensing anything right yeah, so that's true. Uh, <laughs> you know you can you, you, you can say what you want about you know hating the fact that the writers do what they do but there's one thing they do really well there's that, that they market themselves right mm-hmm. and then yeah. the rest of the league is, could do well to stand up and take notice of that but um, it wasn't always like that in the 90s the writers were holding telethons just right. to be solvent yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? so they yeah. were struggling just as much as anybody else was you know but they never asked for any handouts they just they did it themselves right so yeah, you know if they can get the coastal teams back on track, you know Toronto's having a hard time even competing with the attendance wise. With it. the only people that goes to Toronto games are family and side chicks, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Best history. So hopefully they're rectify that situation. Yeah, exactly. uh, I, I feel like you know. If, if we can get because Toronto can't the league can't survive without Toronto. No, it, right, no, know? and and if you, you know, you hear people like, oh, we don't need Toronto. Well, actually, if you look at the demographics of people watching on TV, the majority of them are in Ontario. Yeah, you know, so if you lose that market, dollars. you're going to lose the CFL. So they have to fix that. I don't know how yeah. they're going to do it, but they got to fix that. They're think, working on it. Yeah, I think absolutely. BC's in good hands with Ed. I think yeah. he'll do well with that. Um, I think his style of of. Uh, you know, and, and being closer to that West Coast where he's done so well and bringing all those talented mm-hmm. players, you know, and he'll he'll have a he'll have a good time. Him, Tory Hunter, are going to be yes. in good shape out there for a while. So. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, obviously, uh, it was an up and down year in '93. It was. Um, by the end of September, you guys were in fourth place. Yep. Before you went on a five game winning streak to end the season, ended up at twelve and six in second place behind Calgary, who of course had won the last two consecutive West Finals, uh, and and of course acquiring Doug Flutie. So, getting into the semifinals, uh, you guys rolled over Saskatchewan fifty one thirteen. Yep. Uh, that was at Commonwealth with only about twenty six thousand people with four degrees. Like it, it was, was cool. It was yeah. It yeah. was a weird day. I'll tell you something about that. Mm-hmm. Here. Calgary and we brought Rich Stubler was there and yeah. he designed the defense specifically for Doug Flutie. Right. And we had a really hard time against Winnipeg because the concepts that we applied toward Doug Flutie didn't necessarily work against what Winnipeg would do because right. Winnipeg would throw this would do this throwback where they had this zone pass protect where they would turn back or slide and we would always be out of position because he mm-hmm. would Dunnigan would roll out and then look back, and he had the arm to throw it completely across the field to right. the wide side post, and it was like he would kill us. And as yeah. you would see it the next year in '94 when he threw for 713 <laughs> yards against us, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Know, they, yeah. They, they beat yeah. us like we owed them something. Yeah. One, one could argue that you know, so they kind of, Matt, yeah. Matt ruptured his Achilles in the end of the year there '93, right. but we beat Calgary three times that year, yep. and yep. their record they only lost uh, three games that year. Yeah. Yep. And, and they were all against us. Yeah. So we we were we were designed specifically to contain Doug Flutie. And if you were to look at like our alignments on defense, we were so wide, but our the lanes would close so quickly because we knew that Doug was looking for an in. Like he would never very rarely would rail out, he would step up. And so mm-hmm. Malvin Hunter would you know right. and we, we were really lucky because we got Tony Woods from the Dallas Cowboys yeah. and he was a really good addition. Len uh Leonard Johnson, we called him Show Enough. You ever watch uh, Big Trouble in Little <laughs> <Yeah>. China? <laughs> He was shown off, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the hair and everything like that. He was a little crazy looking, but he was a good backup for Tony Woods. And we had a good rotation because it was me and Leonard, and then it was Benny and Tony. Right. And then we DGs. had Leroy, who was probably one of the best strong side outside guys. And then we had Malvin on the other side. Yeah. And then uh, Errol was about 195 pounds, but playing defensive end, and he mm-hmm. could run a 4 3. And he was crazy. He was a freak. Wow. <laughs> Uh, wow. So we had a really crazy rotation going, and we just had so much speed. And then we had Willow Pl- Willie Plus, Larry Rock. I mean, we right. we were unbeatable. You know, ninety six mm-hmm. when we lost against this, uh, Toronto, Larry, it was a Larry, fumble. Larry, Larry, fumble. So Larry right. pulled his hamstring and right. he was, didn't even play that game. It was Bruce Dixon, right. and yeah. they ran the shovel pass at Bruce Dixon the entire game, and that's right. what beat us. It wasn't yeah. the big plays; it was the the little shovel stuff that they were doing. Yeah. And Bruce Bruce was just in over his head, right? So. Right. Great guy, but just was yeah. over his head. Um, <laughs> but Larry was the difference, you know. So, uh, but those having those guys come over from Toronto when Damon came, when we had that little six game uh, 
our five game winning streak, we started running this thing called the Sally Rand. Yep. Yes. And um, that's a bit of an older generation thing. And Sally Rand, for those of you at home who don't know who the hell I'm talking about, Sally Rand was a uh, burlesque sort of like, you know, strip <laughs> tease where she yep. would hold these feathers and you never really saw what you wanted to see, but she only let you see what she wanted you to see. So you never actually saw what you wanted to see, but you saw enough that you wanted to see it again. Right? <laughs> so Damon would hold the ball on his hip. And he would bootleg, and it was called the Sally Ram because you never quite saw the football, so the defense couldn't understand, didn't know if he had it or if he didn't. Right. So the end, the defensive end would stop, and it would freeze him. So what it did was it created a lane for Lucius Floyd, if he got the ball, to run mm-hmm. like 10 yards or 15 yards at a clip, and that's exactly what we did. We, we rode that all the way up to the Grey Cup, and yeah. teams didn't have an answer for it. Yeah. And so this time of the year, when you get a team that gets on a streak, you look at the 97 Saskatchewan Rough Fighters, they started running that option with Reggie yep. Slack, who's yep. from Auburn, right? And mm-hmm. uh, you know he had enough life in that one knee that he could run it for two or three games, but just, Toronto ended up running over him in the Grey Cup here at 97. Yep. So it really depends. Like You get a team that has a gimmick or something that starts to work and defense just can't quite figure it out. You only have two games, so you mm-hmm. can come up with something. Hey, yeah. That's why you really, the good teams come up with the wrinkle that yep. at this time of the year where they hold it, they keep it for like they see something in the offseason and then they say, I'm going to bring this out right around... November 3rd and November 10th. <laughs> and it won't get people time to, to adjust to it. So this yeah. is the time of the year where you really look for those sort of wrinkles. And that's, that was the Sally Ram was certainly an example of that. Yeah. So, was that and Damon was the awesome. only guy that could pull that off. Yeah. Know? Well, so. yeah. Cause you, you never knew if you could take off yeah. running anyway. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you talked about Lucius Floyd. Uh, yeah. Floyd had a great set of playoff games. He did. Uh, he in the West semifinal, he rushed for 127, uh, 121 yards and added 70 yards in the receiving. Yep. He was and, a good two, like two way back. Right. And he was also fantastic at picking up block blitzes and stuff. He was very smart. He was a cerebral back. Um, he, you know, Saskatchewan had him and they mm-hmm. let him go. I, we right. were, we were flabbergasted when they let him go because it was such a two way, like Ken Austin used him a lot to like dump off. Ken Austin right. was the king of the padding his stats, right? They'd sure. be behind by 20 and he'd be like trying to get his 50 completions, right? And, <laughs> it was brutal. Like, I, I always thought he was overrated, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I digress, <laughs> but uh, he, you know, and and Lucius was that guy that would never drop the ball, so. right? Right. So that you just give it to him, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we get to the West Final. West Final uh, against Calgary, <laughs> who had won the year before. There's the one where the you know Flutie loses his shoe. Twenty nine fifteen, buddy. Yeah, yep. that was the game, and it was in a blizzard, um, yeah. which it was, was the coldest game I've ever played in. I, I, actually, I got frostbite and two fingers. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, wow. it was. Uh, yeah, and the 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 propane heaters all froze up on the oh. sideline. Like it was thirty five below. <gasps> yeah, so, yeah, it was. It I'm was. I'm surprised they let him play. It was brutal. It was. Um, yeah, I've never been in a game like that before since. And uh, Doug Flutie, and you know what? Like, he got a bad rap for that. Sure. And, and he's Doug. Doug is the toughest quarterback I've ever played against. And people were like, oh, he's a, he's a wimp. He couldn't Can't play in the cold. Man, we were all suffering. You know, yeah. like, and it wasn't like just because we won didn't mean we had it any easier because we were all we were like, yeah, let's get the hell off this field. Let's go. Yeah. Like you know. Uh, yeah, that was, that was quite a memory. That's probably one of the the best memories I've ever had. You know, that was a that was a great year. We actually played Calgary the last game of the regular season right. at home, and we beat them. Um, and then we knew when we won that game that we were going to win in the Western Final. Sure. I remember being out the night before the game on Electric Avenue. And we were all out, and the girl came up, and she goes, you guys don't really think you can win tomorrow, do you? I said, yeah. I said, I'm coming back here next week, and we're going to win the Grey Cup. And she's like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. I said, watch us. Yeah. And we, like, we just knew we were going to win. We didn't think we were going to lose. We knew yeah. that if we could withstand the first quarter, we would win the game. And that's exactly what happened. Like, it, they came out furious, like, yeah. you know, dink and dunk. And we just, like, we withstood the, the initial rally. And then we just kind of found our groove. And, um, you know, Jim Sandusky and Jay Christensen had a phenomenal game yeah. that day. Yeah. Like, they were both, like, cold weather football players that, you know, they had their glass cutters and they just, they didn't <laughs> drop anything that day. No. Yeah. <laughs> Sandusky. Damon, again, great game. Four touchdown yeah. passes. Yep. So skinny could run between the yep. snowflakes and everything else. So. <laughs> run between yeah, the snowflakes. They had, uh, that was the that first year that, um, Marvin Pope, Big Daddy, yep. he came in and they were using him as a defensive end. He was a linebacker. They put him out there. They had him and, if I'm not mistaken, had Will Johnson on one side and him yes, on they the did. other side. That and then correct. they brought Cofield in, I think, the next year, two years, mm-hmm. maybe three years before after that. But uh, yeah, you know, Calgary, they had Harold Hasselback, who mm-hmm. was, he went on to win the Super Bowl with the, with mm-hmm. the Broncos for two years and he was fantastic. And they just, Calgary had no weaknesses, you know, and and you really had to play your best when you were playing them. And they had a, they were just, it was just a great time to be in the CFL, man. They, yeah. they, the Calgary had some of the greatest football teams I've ever seen. You know, for them to only win, what fifteen and three, cup yeah. yeah, with Doug, 
I have no idea how that happened. You yeah. know? And I think a lot of big part of it had to do with the fact that we beat them in 93 and then sure. 94 BC because his brother went crazy yeah. yes. on their field, right? And they yeah. made that improbable run. And then in 95, they lost to Baltimore. So, you know, they they had probably as good a team, I think, on paper as Edmonton did in those 95 in a row. They just, it just didn't work out for them at the end of the year. So yeah. it just goes to show you that the CFL is amazing, you know, you you know, you, I, I would argue that some of the greatest teams that ever played in this league didn't win the Great Cup. You know, if you look at the Saskatchewan yeah. Rough Riders, 69, they had a 12 guys, 11 or 12 guys who were Western All-Stars. Sure. And my dad said they were unbelievable. They were stacked up and down. He said they weren't expected to win that game. He said, but they were, uh, Saskatchewan was 13-3. and three. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he said they weren't expected to beat them, but they did. You know? yeah. And then in 66, they were supposed to beat them, and right. they lost. So, yeah, but they also lost know. their coach right before that. Yeah, yeah. the CFL, man. They yeah. Know, like, you, you just don't know, you know. And I know those guys in, in the Stampeders. I talked to uh, um, the receiver, 25 Sapungus? Sapungus, yeah. yeah. And he had bought like maybe 15, 20 tickets. Right. And when we beat them, he had to sell them all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, because the Grey Cup was in, in Calgary here yeah. in 93. And so we put up our Eskimo stickers on the top of their lockers. And so when we played them in 94, they beat us by like 50 points. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't too happy with it. Uh, I mean, yeah. In, in the moment, it was little, awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, God. At that's that what's point, happening I mean, this year. Calgary had only hosted the Grey Cup twice, and Edmonton won both times. Yep. And uh, it was glorious. Hey, Calgary hosts next year. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. That yeah. means we're a lock. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I noticed, especially looking back at those games, the 93 West Final, the 93 Grey Cup, you guys are running a, a really interesting alignment where you had sometimes just two down linemen with We Woods ran with two down linemen the entire year. Yeah, it's like and two, was, four, uh, and that six. That was very forward thinking. No other teams had done that before that. So we ran this basically a nickel alignment. Right. And we were only running with two down linemen and really only t- – Maybe two or three line, two linebackers most of the time. Mm-hmm. We had two DB types, so we had Donnie Wilson playing nickel. Yep, um, and, we and had Robert Holland. You know, and- yeah, and and so we we were really like, and and that nickel spot that Donnie and Wilson played was the most important because sure. he had to be out on number three, which yeah. was the, usually Sapunjas or Pitts. And so what he had to do was basically force him, like play force on the inside and keep him out and not let him inside. And so Trent or Danny Murphy, Dan Murphy was crazy. Yeah, like he, yeah, he was nuts. <laughs> Um, uh, someday we can have an episode about Dan Murphy. <laughs> okay, but, then <laughs> I would stand. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, and he. Blood. But but what Rich said to Dan was just stay between the hashes. We're not asking, and then just line up, stay twenty five yards deep, which mm. is crazy when you're asking the safety to be twenty five yards deep. Yeah. But that tells you how good our halfbacks were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, our halfbacks were unbelievable. Yeah. And so what they did was they funneled everything into him, and then he could knock him out <laughs> or get the interception. So, but that was just a good example. Is everybody knew what their responsibilities right. were, but we had a shutdown corner, and that was Robert Holland. Yes. You know, and he yeah. really, like, he came out of left field and nobody knew what to do with him, you know, and he, he gave people fits, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other quarter, the other corner was Morris Lawler. Yeah. Uh, oh, he was okay. quite good out of Friends University in Kansas. You can't find it on a map. No but, doubt. Yeah. Friends <laughs> University. Yeah. And then you, you, yeah. know, and you had two guys that could be either outside linebackers or defensive yeah. ends with Hall, with uh, Melvin Hunter and, and Leroy Blue. I mean, yeah. Uh, just, well, Malvin was a linebacker, and right. then they put him at out defense. He never played defensive end in his life. Right. So they just said, uh, him and Leeway were roommates, and Leeway taught him how to pass us, and wow. he became one of the best. Yeah. So, wow. But we had a really good rotation, you know. And then, But the other thing was is that our defense got to the point where we could actually move anybody anywhere. Like, right. I, I was 230 pounds, 240 yeah. pounds, so I could play inside or I could play outside. Right. And nobody really knew where we were coming from. We ran these really exotic stunts, but we always had these really super wide alignments, and we mm-hmm. would squeeze the lanes so quickly. And teams, I remember talking to old linemen from other teams. They were like, they couldn't get over how quickly the lanes would shut down because they would look and get eyes would get wide and be like, because Calgary used to line up, like, I'm not even kidding, like, four feet splits. Wow. And that yeah. was by design to give Doug room to run around. Right. But we would squeeze things so quickly and so fast that he wouldn't be able to run anywhere. So, Oh, um, man. Yeah. It was uh, it was interesting because, you know, there's always a chess match. There's always a game within of the game, right? And so I couldn't tell you what that is right now because I'm not, you know, involved yeah. in coaching or whatever. Yeah. But I, I could say that usually there's a team that's got some sort of gimmick that people can't figure out so they try to figure it out it's a, it's a sort of a Rubik's Cube <laughs> kind of like with Nick Saban in Alabama when he came up mm-hmm. with that whole match concept and Rich Stubler brought it up here you know that's stuff that people don't really understand that coaching is really like a big fraternity where everybody shares their thing and then they try things and you know there's nothing new under the sun right so they keep you know 
reintroducing these old concepts and trying to catch people off guard. You know? Yeah. So we'll see some of that, you know, this this year in the playoffs, and that's something I always look for every year to see. You know, there's always yeah. that one team that brings some sort of gimmick, and it's like, holy crap! Like <laughs> we weren't expecting that. Like, do we have time to prepare for that? You know, and the good teams do. They they yeah. figure it out. You know, so awesome. One yeah. of the coolest things to me about that Grey Cup uh, was seeing when you won that game. Being able to have your name and your father's name yeah. in the same cup, and yeah, that, that doesn't was, happen very often. That was pretty cool, and I, I think at that time I didn't really understand it. Like I right. wasn't really, I didn't really. Now that I'm older, like I, I, I cherish it and I get it. But at that time, I was young and I was thinking about, you know, I wasn't really thinking about that, right? Um, you know, and that my father's passed away, and you know, there's there's something to see to be said about that, and and the history of that trophy and how it's been around for so long, yeah. Um, every time I see the trophy, I always make sure I get a look at my dad's name. And our names are actually above and below one another on that awesome. trophy. So that's pretty cool. So uh, when I'm here in, you know, in the Grey Cup, there's here in town, I'm going to look for the Grey Cup. And you know, I always have a moment with it. You know, yeah. I know the guy that keeps Jeff. Uh, he mm-hmm. always brings a trophy. Jeff Jeff, yeah. uh, McWinnie. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a great guy. Um, and his father was an Eskimo. Yeah, his, yes, he was. And right. uh, so, yeah, I always have a nice little um, moment with it when I see it. But... At the time, I didn't appreciate it. You know, like I knew what it was and I was aware of it, but I wasn't sure like what the significance was because mm-hmm. I wasn't sure how many people. But I'm pretty well aware that it's a pretty elite it is club. Very, yeah. It's not many people who get to do that. So it's awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so. outstanding. Uh, lastly, do you still keep in touch with a lot of the people from that sort of era? Yeah, I do. Um, there's not a lot of guys that are in town. You know? Right. I was kind of disappointed the Eskimos didn't do anything for that 25. I was shocked. <laughs> I never see, but I, you know, happen, yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean. It's a double thing too with the seventy, the fortieth anniversary of Commonwealth. Yeah, not really looked at the beginning of that five in a but row era. That requires like somebody to organize it. You know, right. when the sixty nine team in Ottawa when they did that thing, it was all Jim Kane, and he that's what he does. He, he's right. a phenomenal. He he left no stone unturned. I think there was only one guy that didn't make it. That's still wow. alive. Yeah, it's wow. been that phenomenal. So. But I also think that's a testament to like what their market was at the time. Sure. I think that that team in particular set the stage for football in Ottawa, and right. they were the ones who pushed so hard for football to come back with the right ownership. Mm-hmm. And they did it, and they got the right ownership. And the rest is like you know, I mean, look at the pudding, right? So, yeah, um, I think Edmonton is similar in that regard. But I think that um, there's a weird thing going on right now with. Uh, I'm not sure they know. I don't think the football side of things and the. The, Business. the administration that yeah. can kind of quite agree on what they're trying to do on game day. You know what I mean? Like, right. You know, and I think if you look at a purist, if you talk to a purist, like, I don't care what you do at halftime. I just want to see the team win the game, you know? Yeah. But then you've got this other segment that's like, well, you know, I want to be entertained. But that field is not built for that. Like, right. you got it, it was built with a track, and the stands are so far away. Yes. And yeah. Uh, I laughed because they had the the rapper there, but you couldn't even see him because he was on the on the other side. Like I couldn't see yeah. him, you know. Unless yeah. I was down on the field, I had tickets to it, but I gave him away, you know. So I let yeah. other people go down there. But I don't know. I mean, I understand. I understand it, but I don't understand it. Yeah, you know what I, I mean, I, like, get that. Uh, I think that what at the end of the day, what brings fans to the stadium is winning games. Yes, you know, and I think that's what this particular franchise was built on. You know, I remember coming here in 1990. And we would go to the petroleum club and we could order whatever we wanted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to get yeah. um, truffles <laughs> or scallops. Truffles. I only want two truffles <laughs> and one scallop. <laughs> You're right. And then I want a big plate of spaghetti. <laughs> right? it's and then they were like, alignment. okay, you can have a choice of steak, chicken, or fish. Yes. However, whatever you want. And then it was like chicken or pasta. And then it was like you can have cereal. <laughs> <laughs> but that was in the late 90s. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, bad. That's, that's, but, I mean, that was the, that five-in-a-row team set the table for that. Yeah, and, and absolutely. It was, it was winning games. It wasn't yeah. putting on rap shows. It was not It was only winning games, you know? Yeah. And that stadium was built not for rap shows. That stadium nope. was built for winning games, yeah, right? Games. And, you know, the Commonwealth Games and all that other stuff. But, um, and this team certainly has that. It's a community-owned team. I think the fans will support it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that. I think this is a glitch. I think mm-hmm. that you know the team will work its way out of it. I think the team is bigger than anything that's going on right now. Um, I mean, you guys sitting around here is just testing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm, I, I, I wouldn't play for any other team. You know, and yeah. I love the fact that you're asking about the '93 season because yeah, I don't think anybody remembers it because it's a long, such, such a long time oh, ago. No. But, um, I think that this team will be great again, but it might take a bit. It's all-
that was an awesome that was S- history moment. I love going back and and talking about some of these old things. Let's uh, let's go to our pickums for this week because uh, yeah, we still have games. Oh, right. I don't, I don't <laughs> mean anything, but we, we still have games. games so. and that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's next week. Um, anyway, the uh, leader after this, we give a new leader in pickums. Oh. Derek, I said Max the Eskimos aren't playing next week. The Eskimos still aren't going to play. That's yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Derek Mapstone is now into oh, first. Hey, uh, Vic L and CFL Smith are right in the race, so it's very close. Super fan, you are at 29th, and I am at 40th. Yeah, I 40th. So uh, I congrats. Last place You've yet? won this year. I can't beat you, you now. Sure? There's no you way won. I can beat you. Well, of this. In our own little, in our own little oh, okay. thing. Yes, hey, exactly. what's at stake? Nothing. Pride. Just bragging rights. What would you say? Pride. Yeah. Pride. Have bragging I, rights. Yeah. yeah am it. I last yeah. place yet? Yes, you are. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. It helps. You're, 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 you're getting down last there. Place. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to do it for like four weeks. <laughs> and then oh, that okay. guy. Yeah. She went away, and that 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 messed it all up. Okay. And our first game this week is Toronto versus Ottawa in Ottawa. Um, Kayla, who do <laughs> oh, you have God. in this game? Your first up. Ah! Oh wait. Really? Would, would Ottawa be playing their starters because they've locked up? They may not be right. because they've locked up first. Yeah. So, yes. They're likely to be saving a lot of their starters, I would guess. Let's go with the turtle. Ooh, a little hey, turtle action. Hey, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Go Frankie. All right. Frankie is what I meant Frankly. to say, not frankly. You know what I mean. Yeah. Frankly, All right. So uh, uh, you're going to you're gonna go with Toronto. I'll do Toronto, yeah, because I just don't want Ottawa to win. So. All right. Jed? Who do you got in this one? Um, I'm going to say Ottawa. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Super fan? Yeah. I, I don't think they're going to be playing a lot of their starters, but that being said, Toronto's just a mess this year. Yeah, they're, they're a train wreck. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, they're in, if they could be 10th place, they would. Uh, so, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> you know, Halifax is even playing, but they're in 9th. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Ottawa. All right, then. Uh, I picked Toronto because uh, James Franklin! Yay! Yay! All right, I picked the yeah, yeah, I gotta love the turtle. Okay, uh, next game, uh, we're f- fairly familiar with this one. Uh, Winnipeg versus Edmonton. As I've said in the Periscope and uh, was wearing my shirt tonight, it is the Santa's Anonymous game, so make sure that you are either bringing an unwrapped toy or some cash for Santa's Anonymous. It's a huge thing. It makes a great deal of difference for yes. kids. Let me tell you, from my own experience, having been a delivery driver for Santa's Anonymous for going on nine years now... Um, it is um, one of the greatest experiences to see some of these kids and parents face yeah. when you show up. Um, and I've had it both both ways where you show up and the parent is like, oh, your, your timing is perfect because my kid isn't here. And it's awesome, yeah. right? Uh, but there's also that moment where you get to show up and you say, hey, I'm from Santa's Anonymous. And you see the kids in the background just start bouncing around really? the entire house <laughs> and the smiles that you get. Um, it is just something, and we'll give more information on delivery day when the time comes, but please make sure you bring something to support Santa's Anonymous. Um, there isn't an early game, so we'll be playing an older Eskimo game, I yeah, would Yeah, we'll play the 93 Grey Cup. 93 Grey Cup, I think that would be perfect. I think we'll have that on the big screen at the tailgate, so make sure you come and join us for that. Our Uncle BD Stats Minute. Um, now, Duke right now is 10th in receiving yards in the season record. If he gets uh, more than 153 yards, he will move to third. <laughs> All-time Eskimo in record. Wow. For... For a season, yeah. yeah. Now, so, I mean, to be fair, some of those. I mean, Brian Kelly probably has a lot of them. Of and course, he, he had sixteen game seasons versus yeah, Duke. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there is a difference there, but yes, he could move up to third, which is crazy when yeah. you're in tenth right now, right? Yeah. So that's a big deal. Uh, he also needs one one hundred yard plus yard game to tie the season record for a hundred plus yard games in a season, which yeah. is held right now by. Brian, Brian Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Uh, also, Batman Mitchell has been the top esque receiver for five straight games. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that just waiting for your response. You don't say. I don't. I do say. <laughs> and uh, it's amazing what he could have done with 18 games. Oh. Anyway, um, things that make you go, hmm. All right. Um,. Who do we have in this game? You get to pick first, Jed. Is it going to be Edmonton pulled, playing for pride and pulling it out, or does uh, the Bombers uh, show them up once again? The 90 Grey Cup or the 93 Grey Cup? No, I'm... T- yeah, well, yeah, yeah, which one is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're for both. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Source yeah. block? Yeah. Um, All right. Let me ask you this. 
What's in it for what for Winnipeg to win it? Nothing. To Nothing. Stay healthy. Yeah, they just like want to stay healthy. So is BC crossing right? over no. for sure? Yes. No. The crossing BC over? is crossing over. Oh, BC is crossing over. Yes, they're getting. Yeah, they're staying in third. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to say Edmonton will. I think that Winnipeg with them kind of they'll probably coast and and mm-hmm. not and try to just get through the game healthy because yeah. there's yeah. really nothing for them to gain by just winning it. I don't think. I think they'll they'll will they'll they'll play hard, but. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually wouldn't shock me if they won, but mm-hmm. um, I think that Edmonton, a lot of those guys are going to come out and try to finish strong because they're playing for their jobs, man. Yeah, like, it's, it's a tough, it's cutthroat right now on that team in that locker room. So, you know, they're going to be looking, they're going to be casting a critical eye, and, and and a lot of times the last impression that you leave is the strongest one. So a lot yeah. of those guys are, especially the guys on the fringe on the special teams, they they really have, they're fighting for their lives right now. So I actually would look to Edmonton to win it by two scores. Okay. So, Super fan? Nice. Uh, oh, I think Jed said it all. This is an audition for a mm-hmm. lot of the Eskimos. Uh, Moss said today that Riley will start and finish this game. Um, and as we've seen the entire year, other than a little blip with Danny O'Brien, Riley has taken every single snap yeah. uh, of the game, whether we were way ahead or way yeah. behind or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I fully believe that we're going to be getting our entire team versus Winnipeg can afford to have some of the backup, some of the PR guys even yeah. making that team and, you know, just keeping them loose because if they are needed due to injury in a game, it's good to have uh, some of those guys for the next round. So uh, like Jed said, Winnipeg is going to play hard, but I think uh, if we've got Riley, we always have a chance and I think we'll take it. All right. Yeah. I, I'm going to agree with that. I think that the Eskimos are going to win this one. I, I think Riley wants to leave on a winning note. <laughs> yeah, that sounds sure. horrible for me to say out loud, but I think that with that possibility in there, mm-hmm. I think, he he will will the team to win. So uh, I'm I'm gonna actually uh, go Once with the Eskimos again. in this one again. Yeah, like we haven't had that before. Um, but you never know, right? Chris Trevler can come in and blow us all up. So who knows how that'll yeah. all turn out, right? Uh, Kayla, who do you got? Oh, for Santa's sake, please! <laughs> for win. Santa's sake! Oh my goodness! For the love of Santa. Santa! That's right. We all need a win, Eskimos. God, you better pull this out. I've waited a month, over a month, to freaking watch. <laughs> Of, of a winning game. Yeah, I've been in Europe. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty rough. Gallivanting. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. We all need this, including yourself. So just freaking win. Oh. All right. Well, we'll say you're picking the Eskimos then. Okay. Uh, next game is... Uh, I haven't gone against them this whole season. That's, that's true. Only me. Okay. Uh, this is Montreal versus Hamilton in the Hammer. It's right after our game, so we'll miss the start of this one. Yep. Uh, super fan, you're up first. Who do you got in this one? Uh, you know, again, Hamilton's already got their place mm-hmm. sold uh, solid um there's not a whole lot to play for montreal is again doing an audition but hamilton is just so strong even with the losses to banks and everything else uh, i think they've got a very strong defense mm-hmm. yep. um so uh, it's in the hammer i just i can't see a way montreal wins this one Okay. And see, I went with Hamilton because they have lost the last two and they want to go into sure. the playoffs on a winning streak or on a, on a winning note. Mm-hmm. So I think they play that a much harder and a streak of one is still a streak. Um, so I'm going to pick the Hamilton Tiger Cats in this one. Kayla. Yep. <laughs> Since my opportunities are dwindling to say this, yes, indeed. Hashtag Holy Mazzoli. All right. Perfect. <laughs> go with that. Uh, Jed, who do you got? Montreal hashtag dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with Hamilton. I, don't, I just don't think that Montreal can do anything right now. All I right. think that they're... Um, hey, they won last week. I, Manziel I sh- got his first win. Yeah, scratch my head. And though. last. Like, I, don't, yes. I don't know. Yeah, quite likely. I don't know what to make of that that whole situation. you know. And I, but you know what? Having said that, they yeah, resigned yeah. three of their quarterbacks in addition yes. to Manziel, and they're going to bring him back. So that could be an interesting situation to watch. You know? Yeah. Like, with Manziel, if you built a pretty good squad around him, I don't know. Like, he might be, but who knows what he's doing off the field and what he's not doing off the field. Mm-hmm. So right. that could be the key. And to put your fate of your franchise in his hands is a bit. So I don't know. Pretty, yeah. I, yeah, I think Hamilton right now. They're they I like I like super fan here said that uh, you know their defense is really strong, and yeah. I think that they're going to want to walk into the playoffs with some confidence, and they're not going to let Montreal come into their house and you know with their pop gun offense. You know they're, yeah. they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna make a statement <laughs> going in. Pop gun so. offense. <laughs> I like that statement. That's I thought I read good. that yeah. they were starting Pipkin too. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's what I heard last week, and that possibly. didn't happen. Yeah, so. it didn't happen last week. Either. Oh, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see. 
Uh, all right. So then the last one is Calgary versus BC. This is in BC. Um, I'm picking first. Uh, this game means nothing to either team, but uh, I the, I that I'm going to go with the home team, and I think BC is just on a roll right now, and Calgary is on a downward spiral. And Isn't it was, great? It would be if we didn't suck. Yeah, it would be great. Exactly. But it's uh, that really is frustrating that they're happening to crap the bed the same time that we're not even well, in there. But if they do lose. Yeah. Don't that they lose first place? They do. Yeah, so they have that something means, to play for. They have that something to play for. First. Yep. It's oh, it's entirely possible, but I just uh, you know what though, if you look at these two teams right now, the way they're they're playing, they're trending in opposite directions. Absolutely. So I I'm picking the home team. I'm going to go with the BC Lions. Kayla. Do we? Uh <laughs> Doy? Doy. Uh, I always mark go with her down BC. as a doy. Every time I pick BC, they always lose, and every time I don't, they always win. So, so, so you know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pick them to lose, so Calgary. Okay, you're gonna be Calgary. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that Calgary losing all those receivers, man, like they just haven't been able to to overcome that. Yeah. You know? and, no. Uh, th- which, in a way, sort of surprises me because in the past they've always historically had. Hey, next you're in. You know, yeah. they had so Bruskus for whatever they reason, had yeah. Begleton. They haven't had that, you know. So, and I get it. Like you lost three top tier guys, and any other team that were crippled. But I always felt like Calgary always had that out over everybody else. They always had mm-hmm. like that guy waiting in the wings. That yeah, your next superstar, right? Like yeah. I was there in 1994, or 1995 when they brought Jeff Garcia in. Yeah, yeah. who the hell's Jeff Garcia? Yeah, those are five hundred and thirty-five yards, right? Like, jeez, yeah, exactly. like take oh, it easy. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, they always had the guy. They always had the next up. So, yeah. um, I don't see that this year. And I think that BC, it's a similar thing. You want to make a statement to it. Hamilton wants to go into the playoffs on confident note. Mm-hmm. I think BC wants to do the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. so um, and it's Wally's last. It is game. And so he's home, not gonna, they're right? going to play hard for him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other thing is to the note, right? That is that. I think that BC wants to play Calgary in the playoffs. I think they sure. want it, you know. Yeah. So wouldn't that be interesting? Only way send they can do message. it is in the Grey Cup. Yeah, yeah. I know, that, but they want to send a message. Yeah. yeah. So can yeah. you imagine BC representing the East? Be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the westernmost team, like as far as you can get. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, but without getting off the map, definitely yeah. a possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, super fan. What do you got in that one? Yeah, you know, I talked to podcaster Ryan about this, and really? he said. No, who cares? No, <laughs> no. Uh, it's been said by all of us here so far. They're trending in completely opposite directions. They are really spiraling out of control. I mean, you said Jed, how many receivers they've had, but they've gone through these guys like Begleton. Who is Begleton coming yeah, this year? He from? Yeah. Where, yeah. Where's Breskis and all these guys are coming? But when you had Kamar Jordan, you had Eric Rogers. Like yeah. that was the top guys, and Rodgers is back, but he's just not the same. Not the same. He's not no. playing the same. He's not and then Marky Michelle you know? goes down. Exactly. It was another yeah. guy that was, was big in that. Yeah, yeah, like it's just so. Yeah. It's, I think they've still got some some really good schemes going on, but I don't know if they have the horses. So uh, BC is definitely wanting to go in and make a huge statement because uh, I mean they had a, a not a great game last game. So right. uh, I think BC is going to take this one at home and uh, send Wally out on a winning note. Yep. Mm. All right. That's fair. Huzzah. All right. To uh, we'll talk quickly about our uh, fantasy football, oh, uh, the leader is still the Hell Caminos. I'm all the way up to seventh. Nice. Uh, I'm working my way up there right in the last bit. 26 for you right now, oh, super fan. Uh, got any players you're looking at this week that you might uh, wonder about picking? Yeah, you know, I think it's safe to say I'm taking the Hamilton defense again. <laughs> what? Uh, I know. No. Hard to believe playing yeah. them. Um <laughs> But, you know, I I think this might be a really good time to take some of the cheaper quarterbacks right now. Yep. Yep. You're going to see a lot of guys playing this week. Yeah. Yep. Like Strebler would be a good pick. Absolutely. Exactly. So. Uh, he's not actually that cheap, though, because when yeah, he comes he in, he scores, yeah. right? He's so, always the guy that gets the touchdowns. So, but it might be one where you might look at a guy like yeah. Jennings, where, Jennings, yeah. right, you, you've you got, or you, you want to protect Lule going into the playoffs. Right. Yeah, so yeah. maybe you're going to see a lot more Jennings than That's you might That's kind of what Lule. I'm going for, yeah. just trying to find those cheap quarterbacks because they're going to get getting the time. Yeah. 
and those third receivers because they're t- the top receivers will be in for a bit, but then they'll be out. Yep. And we've talked about him last week, but RJ Harris out yep. of Ottawa, there's yeah. a there's an opportunity for a guy that sure. will get probably yeah. more looks because your guys like Ellingson and Sinopoli may not be maybe our Monty Edwards yeah. of Toronto. Absolutely, yeah, seeing a few more of those spots, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again, Jed, for coming. Yes. This was outstanding yeah, as always. Very it's always much appreciated. Yeah. Uh, love chatting with you. Uh, where does everybody find you if they want to connect with you on social and all those types of things? Well, I'm on Facebook. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, Jed Rock. Um, Instagram, Jed Rock. I think yeah. Jed Rock or maybe Jed, Jed Rock, Rock 43. 43. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> if it's not one, it's so, the other. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm around. You know, okay. Hit me up. I'm good. Okay. Nice. That's, that's fantastic. We, I, and like I said, I, I can't thank you. And especially bringing your dad's ring. It's unreal. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So it's, awesome. It's and good and time, we, we love Thanks for bringing me chatting in. with yeah. you on this. Uh, Kayla, where does everybody find you? At Duchess Lombardi. Perfect. Super fan. Just at 56 Barkies. Oh, not even some type of upset-esque no. fan? No. Dejected-esque fan? Nothing like that? Just looking no, forward to next that's year. 56. Yeah. 50, 56. 56 Barkies. <laughs> yeah. You have to say it like that for every now on. So where and now where. You bought up the entire front five rows. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> because you like that, Fitty. That's right. <laughs> I'm calling you that forever now. <laughs> 56 Perkies. All right. You can find me at Free Felicious. Of course, the show at Ask Empire Pod. Thank you again to our sponsor, United Construction Company. Check out their website at unitedconstruction.ca. And of course, on Twitter at UCC underscore EDM. You down with UCC? Yeah, yeah you, you know, know me. me. Lovely. Make sure you find us on all of our social channels. You can find those and all of the links to the shows on AskEmpire.ca. We will be back next week to wrap up up the season and we will have a new featured fan to go over that and then uh, following that we'll see how things go but we will have some Grey Cup updates of course so should the Esks find that pride this week and win the last game at home absolutely Absolutely. (laughs) we're going to leave it a little different this week with our buds from Tupelo Honey with a perfect song for this week nothing left to lose so I guess that's kind of fitting so for Jed Commissioner Kayla and Superfan Mike I'm Andrew remember you can't catch footballs with your face and we will absolutely talk to you next week